Hi, this is Robin with ZSA. I wanted to take a few minutes to highlight this very cool community feature made by Pierre Poulain. It's called Orcs with Custom QMK, and it starts with this GitHub repo. So, as you may know, our uh, Orcs configurator works off of QMK. QMK is an open source keyboard firmware. And traditionally with QMK, to make any changes, you would need to modify C code. That's obviously not for everyone, so we created Oryx as a completely visual and easy way to generate um, QMK layouts. Of course, we can't implement every single feature that QMK has, so if you want to use a, a more power user-oriented feature, you can still um, go directly to the QMK code with your Oryx layout. But in the past, this was kind of a one-way trip. You can't really come back to Oryx while also using custom QMK features. Where this project comes in is it kind of bridges the gap, so it lets you continue to uh, maintain your Oryx layout while also using um, interesting and more powerful QMK features that you may want to use. So uh, I will run you through a quick example of how to use it. First, we'll come to the Oryx with custom QMK repository and fork it. Create a new fork. You can name this whatever you want. Uh, we want to make sure to uncheck, copy the main branch. The project has two branches and we need them both, so we do not want only the main branch. Create the fork. This will just take a second. Okay, great. So. You should see your GitHub username and whatever you've named this. Now we want to go to um, Actions. I understand. Fetch the layout. Run the workflow. And it will ask you for your layout ID and your board type. To find your layout ID, come to your Oryx layout, and it's these first. Uh, five random characters. Copy that. If you see, um, you might see another five characters here instead of latest. The second random five characters indicate the revision of your layout, but you want the first five for your ID. Put that here, and this is a Voyager layout, so I won't change that. Run that. And this will take about two to three minutes. So while that's running, I'm going to talk a little bit more about um, what I'm demonstrating here. So, <clears throat> um, of course, this is my uh, Voyager layout. The, I'm going to make two changes um, using this custom tool. Um, the first one is just going to be a very simple, uh, I'm going to change what a key does. And this isn't really the kind of change you would probably want to make with this tool, but it's just an easy way to demonstrate that the changes uh, have happened. I'm also going to demonstrate adding accordion to a layout. Accordion is a custom multifunction key handler made by Pascal Getreuer, who is also a friend of ZSA, so it's nice to implement one of his features. We've tried out Accordion, and uh, currently we don't have any plans to add to Oryx. That could always change in the future, but we're a little bit concerned about some of the complexity it might introduce. But this project makes it super easy to try for yourself if you're interested in giving it a go. Um, the benefit of Accordion is that it makes multifunction keys, especially homeroom mods, feel better for some people. It makes it harder to trigger them accidentally at the cost of it. Um, it requires a little bit uh, spe a more specific way to trigger the homeroom mods, and we'll get into that in uh, the testing in a little bit. But it's definitely worth trying out if you're interested in homeroom mods and find the default um, QMK, the default way QMK does homeroom mods. Uh, difficult, so we will add this as well. Let's come back here, and this is still going, so I will cut and come back when this is done. Okay, that just finished. So we can see the green check, we see it's working. Uh, we can click in here, and we have an artifact, which is the layout, and we can download that. So importantly, this is your layout exactly as it is in Oryx. We haven't made any changes yet, so this is the exact same thing. Um, you can always flash it to make sure it's working if you want, but if this completes, it should be working fine. So uh, let's come back 
to the code. And I should mention here, I'm going to, um, Pierre was kind enough to write a very nice text guide that I would highly recommend checking out on our blog. I'm going to diverge from the text guide just a little bit to show you um, a slightly different way you can do this. Pierre recommends a traditional git pull, git push workflow, which is still great, especially if you plan to um, do a lot of complex changes or just a lot of changes in general to your layout. I'm going to show you how to do this entirely within GitHub. This method is kind of nice if you only plan to make a couple of changes. Um, it's a little bit faster, uh, less sort of fiddly, but it's um, the ed GitHub editor is obviously not as good as a dedicated IDE. So it's up to you which you choose, whichever you think would work better for you, but I will demo it within GitHub so you see both options. So, um, and one more quick thing we can do uh, before getting into our layout is if we come in here to the YML file, you can hit that, edit, and then here you'll see a default uh, layout ID value. If we come back to our layout, grab the ID, put it in there, that just saves us a step when we rerun this to not not have to put our layout ID in every time. You don't have to do that. You can put it in every time if you want. Uh, it's up to you, but it's a nice little convenience thing. So you've got that. Come back to the code. And once you've run the uh, workflow for the first time, you'll have a new folder with your layout ID. Click into there. And you'll have some files that make up the functionality of your layout. And this is where you can make changes. So we will come back to the accordion documentation and adding it is pretty easy. First we will include this stuff. So just copy that. Uh, we're adding this to the keymap.c file. So we'll come into the keymap.c file, edit, and we'll reformat this in a second. Um, so we will, just for, for nice formatting, we'll put the include with the other includes. And uh, you check out your layout code. You may already have a process record user function. If I scroll down here, I do have a process record user function. So we don't want two of these or the compiler will yell at us. So I'm just going to take this first line because we want this to run before anything else and put it there and then we want to get rid of that so just a little reformatting but it's all the same information we included the features uh, line and we have this um, if statement running so that's uh, that step step two we also need to um, add a matrix scan user function you will probably not have one of these from an Oryx layout, but again, double check just to make sure that you're not duplicating a function. If you don't, you can just throw that in anywhere. Right there should be just fine. We've got that in and okay. So now uh, accordion wise, we're done with the keymap.c file, but before I compile or before I commit this file rather, I'm going to make one more quick change and that is making this blank key a. And again, this is not really a change that you would probably want to make with this tool since you can easily do this in Oryx, um, but this is just an easy way to demonstrate that the changes have happened. So we will commit that. That's a fine message. All right, and we will come back here and step three in your rules mk file, add this line, easy enough. Same process, rules mk, edit and commit. All right. And then step four in the directory containing your keymap.c, create a feature subdirectory and copy accordion.h and accordion.c. So we will need to create a new subdirectory, a new folder within our, uh, our layout file or our layout folder. That's pretty easy in GitHub. You just have to do features and then slash and that will create the subdirectory for you when you create this file. And just to make sure there's no spelling issues, I'm going to just copy paste this, 
Uh, we're going to click in here, grab all of this, paste, commit that, and come back here, copy that, create a new file again, and same thing, come in here, grab this, put that there, commit changes, commit, okay. So we've got these now. If we come back to the accordion guide, the last thing we want to make sure we have is mod tap keys. Mod tap is another way to say dual function, a specific type of dual function key. And I already have these as just a normal feature of my layout. If you don't have them, I would suggest defining them in Oryx first, it's just so you have fewer, um, fewer changes that are specific to this tool to make it a little bit easier to visualize your layout. Um, but since I already have these, we're all good here, and we shouldn't run into um, any QMK version issues. So we are done with the setup. <clears throat> Come back to the actions, and get into the action, and we will rerun this. And you can see that my layout ID is already populated here because of the earlier um, YML file change. So we can just go ahead and run this. And this will take another couple of minutes. Um, one thing I want to highlight as well is if, if you remember, we changed this key to BA. So Oryx won't know, uh, won't know that we made this change, but what we can do with our own layout is label this. So again, this is not a, a change that makes a lot of sense just for demonstration purposes, but if this was a more complicated macro or something, for example, you could label this you know, a, an intelligent label so that you would remember what this key does even though Oryx doesn't know what it does, and that way you won't overwrite it accidentally later. Um, and then you can compile this and another cool feature of um, this custom tool is that when you compile your Oryx layout, you can rerun the tool in the exact same way, and it will pull your Oryx changes into here as well. So you can rerun this whenever you make um, QMK changes or Oryx changes and keep it everything up to date, which is super nice. There's a little bit more information in Pierre's text guide about that if you want to read more. So this will be another couple of minutes, so I will cut again and come back when it's done. Okay, so the second run has finished. This should have our changes, so we can click in here and we will get the uh, new artifact. Let's download that. That is our layout. I'll open that up. Uh, Mac OS is mad that it doesn't know what to do with this bin file. That's okay. Uh, you can see it here in my downloads. Uh, the bin file is the exact same format as you would get um, from Oryx, so this is now a flashable firmware file. Let's give it a try. You can flash, select, and Okay, layout is flashed. Let's display the layout. And so it looks exactly the same. That is expected. We, the, the key label that we made in Oryx won't appear here unless we rerun the workflow again, but it should behave differently. Let's see. Let's open up a quick test note. So we have a note. And so the first thing we can try is that just random key we assign. So look at the bottom corner key and we can see that it uh, sends A. Even though to Oryx and Keymap, this key is blank, our custom changes went through, so this key now sends A. And again, with a custom label in Oryx, we could actually see also see this in, in Keymap if we wanted to. Now let's check out Accordion. So Accordion is a little bit difficult for me to demo because I'm already very used to dual function keys from using them all the time. I don't use Accordion normally, but you can, of course. I just got used to the default way before I tried to ever tried Accordion. 
Uh, but accordion is nice. Sometimes people find it much easier to learn dual function keys with accordion, so it's, it's, it's worth trying if you find the default way difficult. Um, one way you can tell if accordion is enabled for you is accordion will not let you easily trigger a shortcut with the same key. So if I have some, some more A's and I try to quickly do a control A with my left hand, so only using my left hand, it won't work. You see, even though I'm holding my D key, which is control, and hitting A, that should select everything, but it doesn't. However, if I do this with control on my right hand and A on my left, that does work. And I can do that quickly too, as well. So that's a good indicator. Another quick test is if you just roll um, dual function keys on one hand. So if I roll FDSA on my left hand, under normal QMK function, I would probably get some weird combination of shortcuts, but with accordion, I should just get the letters FDSA, FD, FDSA, yeah. So I'm just, I'm rolling these and I'm getting the letters. There's no held actions coming through. But again, if I do this with my uh, right hand, the shortcut works and I can do that quickly as well. So things are working great. Uh, obviously, there's a lot more configuration you can do with Accordion and other QMK features. Check out uh, Pascal's docs as well as the official QMK docs, depending on what features you're interested in. And this is a great way to try out QMK features that we can't offer through Oryx. Hope this was helpful, and big thanks again to Pierre for creating the tool and writing the great guide for us. Have a good one.